happy Friday. You made it to another Friday. And I think you're doing a fantastic job working through each day, even though I'm not here to go live with you. You're learning so much about simple expressions, how to read them, how to say them, and how to write them numerically. Today, we're gonna to take a little step out of the fifth grade standard and start talking about variables. That's right, we're moving from simple expressions to algebraic expressions. Now, you won't see this on any tests or quizzes, but it will prepare you for middle school, so I hope you pay attention. You're going to need your math journal and a pencil today. That's it, so let's get started. All right, open up your math journal to the next clean page. And at the top, again, label it simple expressions. And go ahead and give the date on the side. All right, so like I said, today we're gonna be talking all about variables. Remember, make sure your notes are nice and neat and they look like mine. All right, so the first thing we want to do is define what a variable is. A variable is any symbol. Now, usually it's a letter, but it can be any symbol that represents a number or a value that is unknown. A variable is any symbol that represents a number or value that is unknown. So as you get into middle school and high school and you start working with algebraic equations, algebra is when we have an equation with a missing piece. And we have to go in and find that missing piece. So we label the unknown with a variable, typically a letter like X, Y, Z, A, B, could be any. So let me give you an example of what that might look like. So you might see a problem that looks like this. We would read this problem, three minus X equals one. And your job would be to figure out what X equals because X is your variable. And I bet you all have already figured out what X equals, haven't you? What is it? Right, the variable X equals 2. So that's how we can use variables to represent a number we don't know the value of. Because we start bringing in variables when we get into algebra, and one of the variables that we often see is an x, mathematicians learned very quickly that our multiplication symbol looks a lot like the letter x. This can get people a little confused. Let me show you what I mean. Let's make ourselves a chart. And let's label the chart showing multiplication. So I'm going to show you a numerical expression and an algebraic expression. And I want you to see why the multiplication symbol might start to get a little bit confusing when we get up into higher math. So a very simple problem, two times three equals six. We're all used to seeing problems that look like that. But let's replace the numbers with variables. We could say A times B equals C. 
Each letter represents a different value. A represents the 2, B represents the 3, and C represents the 6. It shows us that one value times another value will give us a third value. But look, now that I've got an equation full of letters, that time symbol looks a whole lot like the letter X, doesn't it? So mathematicians needed to come up with a different way to show multiplication. So sometimes we see something that looks like this. 2 times 3 equals 6, where the multiplication symbol is represented by a dot. Now, when we come into our algebraic equation, a times b equals c. Now we don't think that there's another variable x in the mix. We see it as a dot. So that works well, too. But sometimes people get that confused. They might think it's a decimal. In fact, did you know that in other countries, that's where they put the decimal? Is in the middle of the number, not at the bottom? It's true. So the mathematicians had to come up with another way to represent multiplication. And here's what they came up with. They said, let's just take the symbols out all together. And let's do this. So when a number is right next to a parenthesis, it also means multiplication. In an algebraic equation, they might write it this way, or you'll sometimes even see them write it this way. Now, of course, we can't do that when we have num letters because then it would just look like the number 23. Excuse me, we can't do that when we have numbers because it would look like the number 23. But with variables, if there's nothing in between the variables, it's multiplication. Pretty interesting, right? As we get into higher and higher math, mathematicians discovered that multiplication needed to be represented in different ways. So we went from the x to the dot to the parentheses or just two variables next to each other. All of those can represent multiplication. Just a fun little tidbit of knowledge for you. Let's practice looking at some variable equations. Okay, so let's start off with an easy one. What if you saw y added to 43? How would we write that as an algebraic expression? Yeah, just the way that it sounds. Y added to 43, or Y plus 43. So the variable acts just like a number would. Can we try one more? What about 5 less than Z? How would we write that one? Ah, well, do you remember our notes from yesterday? Less than brings us over here to our subtraction chart, where we see when we hear less than, our mind needs to say flip the order, flip the order. 2 less than 6 became 6 minus 2. So 5 less than z becomes z minus, ooh, my pencil just broke. That's how excited I was. Z minus 5. All right, friends. So those are just some quick notes on variables. You're going to have a fun activity on Class Kick where you can practice your hand at some more challenging algebraic expressions. And then you'll have an OYO assignment to do. The OYO assignment is for a grade, but it will not have any variables on it, as variables are not a fifth grade standard. It will simply see how well you have comprehended what I have taught you this week. Good luck, take your time, and use your math journal. I'll see you guys live on CTLS on Monday. Have an awesome weekend. Bye.